come, O Lord our God. with the wisdom to praise you in spirit and in truth, so by following your holy will, you may gain eternal salvation. Amen. Well, I welcome you here on this absolutely beautiful Sunday morning. Um, as I was walking in, a lot of people said Father's Day-esque, and it's too bad we're not one week earlier with this, we could have been outside. Uh, yesterday was another beautiful day. It started off kind of messy, but then got nice. And uh, there's a very nice young family right next door to the rectory. Three little tiny kids, and one of their birthdays was yesterday. They had a bounce house outside. So I wanted to go over and bounce in the bounce house, but no adults were allowed, so I couldn't go in the bounce house. Last night, Sharon and I, we went to a wedding, and uh, it was over at the Northampton Country Club. And what perfect timing for this bride and groom, because last night was also the fireworks over at Look Park. And so from where we were at the uh, wedding, you could see all of the fireworks from uh, Northampton. So a little bit later than I'd like on a Saturday evening. Um, so we'll uh, do the best that we can, a little bit groggy, but a very nice day yesterday and looking forward to a very nice day today. And it's especially nice that when you can do so many things, whether it be Saturday night or Sunday during the day, uh, you still find time on a day like this to come into a church, to sit on a wooden pew, and to come and worship God. And so we do thank you for that, and I think it puts a smile on Jesus' face as well. So as we do come together as God's people on this special occasion of a Sunday morning, I ask you to please make a private examination of your conscience. And they will recite the confidior together. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, who knows the innermost secrets of my heart, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed. By my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. In your presence, O God, I publicly express sorrow for the many sins by which I have offended you. I resolve to amend my life, to improve and sanctify, endeavoring henceforth to serve you faithfully all the days of my life. I ask all those who dwell within the Church of Christ, the Blessed Mother Mary, the Holy Apostles, martyrs, and faithful, who have lived, suffered, and died for the Gospel of Jesus Christ, as well as you, my brothers and sisters, to witness my confession and pray for me to our Lord God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. May the Almighty and Merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me, I absolve you from all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Show us your mercy, Lord. Amen. Lord, hear our prayer. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Grant, most gracious Father, that with purity of heart, we may worthily fulfill this holy action, establish remembrance of the Last Supper and the death of Jesus Christ, and for our sanctification and salvation. Be present among us, Jesus, our most perfect Master, because you said there were two or three are gathered together in my name, you are among them. We also ask, Lord, that through this holy liturgy, we may experience a spiritual revival and a better understanding of your holy will, bringing us together in one great family, guided by your commandments and by love, truth, and justice. Amen. And may we say together, let us pray to the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, 
one God, invisible, revealed in triune power for all time, now and forever. Glory to God in the highest, and peace with people on earth, Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father. We worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, pour out your spirit and inflame us with the fire of your holy love. Grant us the words to move the hearts of all people and the courage to hold firm should your word be rejected. We ask this for our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. The lesson prescribed by the Church for this morning's Holy Mass is taken from St. Paul's letter to the Romans. Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man, and death came through sin, and so death spread to all because all have sinned, sin was indeed in the world before the law, but sin is not reckoned when there is no law. Yet death exercised dominion from Adam to Moses, even over those whose sins were not like the transgression of Adam, who is a type of the one who was to come. But the free gift is not like the trespass. For if the many died through one man's trespass, much more surely have the grace of God and the free gift of the grace of one man, Jesus Christ, abounded for the many. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I hear the whispers of the crowd. They conspire against me. They plot to take my life. Alleluia, alleluia. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if that be the will of God, than for doing evil. Alleluia, alleluia. Cleanse my heart and my lips, Almighty God, as you cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal. In your mercy, cleanse me so I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips so that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the holy gospel according to St. Matthew. And Jesus said, Therefore, do not be afraid of them. Nothing is concealed that will not be revealed, nor secret that will not be made known. What I say to you in the darkness, speak in the light. What you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. And do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in Gehenna. Are not two sparrows sold for a small coin? Yet not one of them falls to the ground without your father's knowledge. Even all the hairs of your head are counted. So do not be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Everyone who acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge before my heavenly Father. But whoever denies me before others, I will deny before my heavenly Father. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
If the many died through one man's trespass, much more surely have the grace of God and the free gift in the grace of one man, Jesus Christ, abounded for the many. And this selection is taken from this morning's lesson from St. Paul's letter to the Romans. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I went over to the Sunday of the Library's book sale back in May, and I picked up a copy of a book called, Can a Darwinian Be a Christian? And I probably paid a whole 50 cents for the hardcover book. And on my bookshelf, I have a framed picture of the tomb of Charles Darwin. Now, he is an avowed agnostic. He wasn't sure if God existed or not, but when he died, he was buried in Westminster Abbey Church because of his contributions to human knowledge. Westminster Abbey is the church of all things British. Every British monarch since William the Conqueror in 1066 has had their coronation there. It's a hallowed place to them. It was felt that Darwin brought great honor to his country. Now the Sunday following the funeral, because there must have been some discussion about burying an agnostic in such a holy place, a sermon was preached about the propriety of his burial in consecrated ground. And the homilists threw cold water on the idea that, quote, there is a necessary conflict between knowledge of nature and the belief in God, that you can be a scientist and a person of faith. They are not mutually exclusive. And I couldn't agree with him more. And I often refer to a passage in Romans to explain why. There, Paul writes in one of his most theological uh, letters. He really thinks this one through. The other ones are kind of, you know, they, they just go with a train of consciousness. But Romans is a well thought out theological argument to the capital of the empire. And there Paul writes, ever since the creation of the world, God's eternal power and his divine nature, invisible though they are, have been understood and have been seen through the things that he has made. You know, Roman Catholics, mainline Protestants, and our church have long embraced this attitude toward knowledge. And that's why there's that special quote from Bishop Hoder in 1936 on your song sheet about science and faith being able to coexist. We are created in the image of God, and God is all wise. So when we use the gifts of our intelligence, we are acting as God has always intended. We're using this. This is our connection with God. God has allowed us the privilege of using our wisdom creatively. Just as God is a creative force, when we create using our minds, that's what God intends. And this is what that minister meant back in 1882 at Westminster Abbey when he said that there is no necessary conflict between knowledge and faith. There's even an evolutionary scientist today by the name, and I don't know if I'm saying this correctly, Francisco Ayala, who addresses this topic all the time. And Francisco Ayala is a Roman Catholic priest. And Father Ayala has argued that having to believe in a single pair of parents is the origin of the entire human race, even if they're not named Adam and Eve, that may be a story, but you will go back even further and saying that there were one pair of parents at some time, that that goes against everything observed and taught in evolutionary science. The idea that all of the various pathways that led to the emergence of our human species came from the union of one man and one woman some hundreds of thousands of years ago and based on only one chapter in the Bible and read in a very narrow sense, that creates a bottleneck not seen anywhere else in the history of life. Now, this is important not only for scientists but for people of faith because if the story of one pair of parents is upended, this means that that whole sad theology that we call original sin is upended too. And our church has not taught original sin since at least the 20s or 30s. We threw that out a long time ago. Original sin is the idea that because Adam and Eve sinned, sin has become a part of our inherited human nature. Sin has become a part of our actual DNA. Rather than being in the image of God, original insist, insist that we are very, in our very nature, that we are broken that we are offensive to God from our birth, even before we can make our first choice, even before we can even think about sinning, God looks at each baby and says, sinner. And that is something our church does not accept. This subverts everything about our relationship with God, to God, and it insults the Creator. To be like God is full of promise and potential, but it's also equally full of challenge. It means that we have wisdom and free will, but it's up to us how we use them. 
Do we become creative? Do we become caring people? Or do we take the easier road and sink into destructive and selfish beliefs? But see, the choice is ours. It's not by nature. It's a choice of ours. I'm not born a sinner. I choose to be a sinner. This, of course, means that we can screw things up. When you're given the choice of being good or bad, you can screw things up. But that's the only way also to make becoming good and becoming better our moral accomplishment. Too many times and too many people choose to use the gifts of God in an ungodly fashion. And the results are all of the violence and injustice we see everywhere. But we can't turn around and blame our nature for this. It is not easy to be godly. But nothing worthwhile is easy. Original sin is a kappa. It's an excuse for not working to become what God knows we can become. It lets us settle for crime, war, poverty, hatred, etc., and etc., because that is who we are supposedly by our very nature. We have no chance of overcoming it, so just deal with it. And that ignores the entire idea of what Jesus and God has said, that we can be better than any of that. An original sin not only denies the goodness in us, original sin denies the goodness in Jesus. The last verse of today's lesson makes this clear. It begins with a very important if. If sin and death become a part of our nature because of original sin, then, as Paul puts it, much more surely has Jesus reversed the curse. Jesus is fully human. His nature is our nature. He was us or else he isn't our savior. And Jesus is without sin. So if Jesus is us and Jesus is without sin, it means that our nature cannot be sinful by nature. Our, our human nature can't be sinful by nature. So also, Jesus' grace assures us that he will always be ready to help us to be godly. Original sin denies all of us. It denies the incarnation that Jesus is like us, and it denies the fact that Jesus can help us to be good people. And there's also one more matter to be addressed. Genesis and Paul link original sin, not only to sin, but to death. We're not talking the spiritual death of sin, we're talking about physical mortality. Now, people who believe in original sin, they can speak about our spiritual inheritance, but they're not being absolutely honest because original sin purportedly changed our physical human nature. Before the fall, we were supposed to be immortal. We would never die. We would live forever. After the fall, death enters into our world. This means our physical DNA changed, and original sin is passed along with it. Original sin is somewhere encoded in my DNA, your DNA, everybody's DNA. And I hope we can realize that men and women were never immortal. Darwin has shown the beneficial, random changes that have accrued over the ages, and he wouldn't call it progress, but I will. Original sin throws that whole thing into reverse. We went from better to worse. And Darwin at least offers us hope. Original sin is one of the most despairing theologies ever concocted by the human mind, and the clearer the break we make with it, the better off we will be. The break will be psychologically healthy. It's a horrible thing to tell people that they are sinful from birth. It will be spiritually meaningful. It gives us a chance to become better people, and it will theologically correct that abbreviated reading of Romans that forgets all about Paul's much more surely. So as people of hope instead of people of despair, a people made in the image of God instead of people that have original sin, a people who believe in divine love instead of the fact that we are broken and always will be, in that kind of a message of hope, may we continue to work to better our world and our lives. And these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. This past week, our Bishop Thomas Kanat, the previous diocesan bishop of the Eastern Diocese, passed away, and his funeral will be on Tuesday. And we offer prayers for Bishop Thomas Kanat, uh, that he may enjoy all that he deserves in the heavenly kingdom. We also pray for his wife Catherine and his son Joseph, all of the people that he has served over the, his many years in the priesthood and also as a bishop of our church, and also for his family. We pray, Lord, that they may have that gift of hope that comes from believing in you. 
We also pray at this time in memory of John Yetlitsky on the anniversary of his birth, June 24th, is offered by his daughter, Shirley Yetlitsky Floyd. We offer our prayers in memory of Gus Petito, who passed away on June 23rd of 2001, is offered by the Orlowski and Petito family. We offer our prayers for Maureen Belcha, who will be undergoing breast cancer surgery this Tuesday, is offered by the Lawrence family. We offer our prayers for the health of Richard Slawenwhite, who continues uh, chemotherapy for lung cancer, is offered by the Foster and Co. families. We offer prayers for Luis Pahalski and a speedy recovery, as offered by Linda Pahalski. We also continue to offer prayers for Liz Bridgman, battling cancer and raising three young girls on her own, Alex, a young uh, girl with lymphoma Hodgkin's disease, and Alicia, a young mother of three with stage four breast cancer, is all offered by Cindy Benjamin. We offer our prayers for Bishop Thomas Gannat, um, as we mentioned, and for his wife Catherine and son Joseph. We also continue to offer prayers for those who are battling cancer. Meg Connors is offered by uh, Ellen and Don Strosky. Richard Poe is offered by the Poe and Foster families. And young Jack Soleil is offered by Marianna Foster. Are there any other prayers that you would like to offer from the congregation at this time? And Lord, also we'd like to mention that uh, school summer vacation begins uh, after tomorrow, and we pray for a safe uh, summer vacation for all of our young people and their families, and all these things we offer by saying to Jesus, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord. May they rest in peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things are made for us, for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit, who was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, with the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. We receive from your most sacred hands, most gracious Father, the sacramental bread with the same faith and trust as did the apostles and disciples of your Son and our Savior when he said to them, I myself, the living bread, come down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he shall live forever. The bread I will give is my flesh, for the life of the world. Lord God, you do great dignity and worthy. Jesus Christ, you exalt and renewed and sanctified.
Our sacrifice may be accepted to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. Lord our God, we offer you the sacrifice of praise. May it strengthen our faith in the weak and those fearful moments of our lives. We ask this in the name of your Son and our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God. Forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. Through his cross and resurrection, he freed us from sin and death and called us to the glory that has made us a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people set apart. Everywhere we proclaim your mighty words, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. Therefore the angels and archangels, with all the saints and the entire church, we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We therefore, most merciful Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, most humbly beseech you to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy, unspotted sacrifices, which your holy church receives from you, employing you to defend and guide her throughout the world, together with her priests and all true believers of the holy faith. Remember, Lord, your servant. In 
and of all present in this congregation, imbued with faith in your holy care, your rule, and fatherly love. Wholeheartedly this day, be united in spirit with all of those, given the most blessed Mother Mary, Mother of Jesus Christ, likewise as apostles with all the countless hosts of martyrs and confessors who lived, labored, and suffered for the same holy cause which Jesus Christ sacrificed his life and his most precious blood. Just as they believed, professed, and united with you through prayer and this immaculate oblation, which you have instituted from the beginning of the world and in time have fulfilled through Jesus Christ and gave it to humanity as a pledge of eternal salvation. So we too this day profess and unite ourselves with you, most gracious Father, in humbleness of spirit, and accept from your hands this holy bread and this precious chalice as a longed-for gift bestowed on us by the Savior of the world as spiritual food and drink. He promised us this food and drink in that moment when he revealed his divine power by the multiplication of bread and feeding with it a hungry multitude of people. Afterward, he foretold the giving of that food and drink to his disciples and friends as a more excellent nourishment when he said, It is my Father who gives you the real heavenly bread. I myself and the living bread come down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he shall live forever. The bread I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. And afterwards, when the temple of messianic light, for the divine teacher and giver of the covenant was drawn to a close, he gathered into the upper room all of those who he loved in a singular way, and had chosen to continue his work of salvation. He spoke to them words of deep love, longing, and resolve. I will not leave you orphaned. I will come back to you. I am the way, the truth, and the life. You are my friends if you do what I command you. Do not be distressed or fearful. You will suffer in the world, but take courage. I have overcome the world. If you live in me, and my words stay a part of you, you may ask what you will, and it will be done for you. Anyone who loves me will be true to my word, and my Father will love him, we will come to him and make our dwelling place with him. I consecrate myself for their sakes now, that they may be consecrated in truth, that they all may be one, as you, Father, are in me and I in you. I pray that they may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. I have given them the glory you gave me, that they may be one as we are one, I living in them, you living in me, that their unity may be made complete. Father, all those you gave me I would have in my company where I am to see this glory of mine which is your gift to me because of the love you bore me before the world began. I myself am the bread of life. No one who comes to me shall ever be hungry. No one who believes in me shall ever thirst. After these and other words of the archpriestly prayer and with holy fervor, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hand and having lifted his eyes to heaven and you, his almighty Father, giving thanks to you. He blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner after supper, taking also this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hand, Again he gave thanks to you, blessed it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sin. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, mindful, Lord, we, your servants, and your faithful people, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son and our Lord, as well as his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we receive from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. These gifts we receive with a joyful countenance, as from him who is the giver of all temporal and eternal good gifts, and with an unshakable faith that they will become for our souls a saving remedy. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that our offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your highest altar into the presence of your divine majesty. That we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith, 
and it will pass on to eternity. these souls, Lord, and to all who rest in Christ, grant everlasting life, and to those that are in life straight in the path of righteousness, unmindful of your fatherly love, mercifully short their suffering. We ask this in the name of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part and fellowship of your holy apostles and martyrs and all your saints, who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts are always open to justice and mercy and with lives patterned after their divine master, merited eternal joy. Number us in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, and with him, and in him. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching and following divine example. We say with confidence, By the intercession of the blessed and glorious Mother of God Mary, together with your blessed apostles Peter and Paul, as also Andrew and all the saints, grant us peace in our days, supported by the help of your mercy, that we always be free from sin and secure from all disturbance. Through the same, Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, Forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. May the union of divinity and humanity in Jesus Christ bring us sanctification and eternal life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free me from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful to your teaching, and never let me be parted from you, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be caused for my judgment. Though I am unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become my safeguard and healing remedy. My saving master awaken in me a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. 
through this communion. Make me your willing servant, thou shalt fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite me entirely with you, my Lord and my God. Grant this who lives and reigns with God the Father, in unity with the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. I will take the bread of heaven, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. What shall I return to the Lord for all the grace that he has given me? I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon the Lord, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring me to life everlasting. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. The body and blood. The body and blood. The body Body and the blood of Christ. 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 The body and the blood of Christ. The body and the blood of Christ. Body and the blood of Christ. Body and the blood of Christ. The 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 
public, and even those that are not cannot remain hidden. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, may your grace strengthen us who have shared in the mysteries of this man. Grant us the endurance to do your will and, to resol and resolve to receive you as promised. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you.
oh, the sacrifice is offered. May the tribute of our worship be pleasing to you, most holy Trinity. Grant that the sacrifice which I, though unworthy, have offered in the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you. For your mercy may be effective for myself and all of those for whom I have offered it, through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the almighty and merciful God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.